Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining me uh, this evening on this very uh, valuable uh, webinar about how to detox or decongest your uh, systems in your body. I want to make it clear that, first of all, that this uh, information that I'm relaying is uh, Ayurvedic information. This is a basic Ayurvedic knowledge. I'm taking this from you know, Ayurvedic teachings and, of course, my own experience with an Ayurvedic practitioner. So um, there's some influence by, uh, by Western naturopathic thinking here, but mostly I'm going to convey this from Ayurvedic point of view and the Ayurvedic perspective on how to cleanse or open up these systems, or in Ayurveda, or Sanskrit, is called sutras. So in Ayurveda, we have many different sutras or systems, and these systems can be uh, imbalanced in three ways. One, they can become depleted, depleted, so they're not functioning well through depletion or lack of. Them. And, uh, and the second is inflammation, where you could have inflammation and pain. And the third, is where there's congestion and blockage. And that's what we're going to focus on here today. And that's really probably the most common. So in Ayurveda, there's thousands of systems, but there's 16 main systems. And we're going to talk about these uh, main systems in our body that can be congested and how to decongest them. We're just going to cover eight today. Um, the three malas, the uh, eliminating system, the uh, colon, the urine, and the sweat, plus three other uh, systems that re, uh, as far as the water, breathing, um, digestion, uh, blood, uh, and lymph. We're going to cover all these. And then uh, first we're going to identify which system has which signs of being congested or blocked. So then you could write down, oh, that's the system I need to decongest or detox is the word. But really decongest or unblock the system is what we're talking about uh, today. Um, so first is to look at yourself holistically and determine whether you are, uh, we say, have too much ama or toxicity built up in your system. Not everybody is, so young children often aren't, but we can look at ourselves so, uh, and analyze whether we are uh, congested or we have buildup. Most of this congestion starts in the digestive system by having uh, imbalanced digestion, either low digestion or too strong of digestion or irregular digestion. You can see some of my other YouTube videos about different types of digestion, different types of digestive imbalances and how to resolve those. But due to poor digestion, we're creating this metabolic toxins. Um, and this toxins then gets into our, our circulatory system, then gets to our tissues and gets to other systems in the body and creates a blockage. So the root of the issue is poor digestion, which is another subject by itself. And the main way we can tell that we have this type of AMR congestion in our digestive system is looking at our tongue. Uh, put your tongue out, look at your tongue, and if it's got a heavy film of white over it, this is kind of a type of sign of AMA in the GI tract. If it's only on the very back, then this is mostly ama on the colon. If it's down the center, this is more the GI tract. If it's even on the tip and the whole tongue, then this is starting from the stomach lining all the way down to the colon, has this type of uh, uh, congestion or ama. And if it's white, then this is a type of uh, mucus or kapha. Um, if it's dark brown, this is more of a type of vata, uh, 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 ama. And if it's... Uh, pink and reddish, but still uh, sticky, uh, then this is a type of uh, pitta, uh, ama, or congestion in the GI tract. So hopefully each of you know your Ayurvedic uh, prakriti or body type, vata, pitta, or kapha. So let's look at each of these three types real quickly and look for the signs that you may need this type of decongesting or detoxification. If you're a vata type, um, you know, you're cold, light, light and dry type of person and thin. So this dryness and coldness creates uh, constipation. So the main sign for the vata is uh, constipation, low digestive fire, dry skin, bloating, gas, uh, even uh, uh, pain in the abdominal area, and of course fatigue and general body weakness. When uh, Usually a vata has a lot of energy and when they start to slow down and have these signs and 
have a long history of constipation and dry skin, dry lips, then we could, uh, uh, and that we have this ama on the tongue, then we can say if you're vata, then you need to uh, cleanse and detoxify. The best time, of course, is in spring, but summer is okay, and you should try to do this before the winter. If you're a pitta type, then um, the signs are more like a foul smell, you know, foul smelling underarms, foul smelling uh, a sweat, a yellowish a look to the uh, the face, um, and uh, more of a heat and rash and headaches and indigestion, and also can poor appetite. Pittas generally have strong appetites and are very hungry most of their lives. And if you don't have that strong appetite like you usually do, this is due to this ama, or this congestion that's taking place in the GI tract, uh, particularly maybe the stomach lining too much mucosa in there, blocking your stomach acids, reducing down your, your normal st normally strong appetite. And this type of congestion can create, uh, for the pitta type, can create diarrhea, fatigue, um, indigestion, a sour taste in the mouth, a bitter taste in the mouth, nausea, um, and even fever and, and rashes. Now, if you're a kapha type person who tends to be a little more full-bodied and uh, weakness is overweight and tends to have more swelling, well, uh, the signs of uh, uh, ama or congestion in the GI tract is um, also can be constipation, but the stools tend to be sticky, heavy, smelly. Um, and in fact, in all cases, looking at a stool, if it's sticky, smelly, or, and uh, sticky, um, then this is a type of ama in the GI tract. So you want nice, fluffy, floating, and fresh smelling stool, and then you know your colon's nice and clean. So if you're not in that category and you have to open up the windows and spray a lot of spray and everybody's dying and coming into the bathroom, it may be time to cleanse out that system in your body, your, your uh, colon and GI tract. And we're going to cover that. Um, but for kaphas, they often get uh, a very low appetite where they're not hungry until like 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Then they get hungry later in the day, so this low appetite. They tend to get cold, congested, upper respiratory blockage, uh, mucus, phlegm. Now, everybody could get some of this too, but if you're getting any of these signs right across the board, um, then this is particularly this mucus and phlegm and congestion. This is a type of ama because kapha is very similar to ama. So a lot of people who are vata or pitta prakriti types may start, when they get ama, start to get kapha symptoms like weight gain uh, and uh, respiratory congestion and lower appetite. And those are because the ama is very similar to kapha and of course it creates more kapha. So often this is the cause of your weight gain is this congestion in the in the GI tract and this congestion of ama in the system that ends up blocking the systems in your body, these sutras, okay? So hopefully first you've decided, am I toxic or not toxic? So, uh, you know, remember the stinky stools, stinky sweat, stinky urine are some of the main signs. For uh, urine, um, a burning sensation in the urine, smells, stinky smelling urine, and urine that stains your underwear. That, that means this urinary system is uh, toxic. Um, and of course, uh, uh, smelly is always a giveaway that you need a little cleaning, both for your uh, urine and your kitchen sink. Um, and then sweat is very similar. If it's staining your clothes and staining the underarms of your clothes and has a smelly smell to it, if it's itching, if it, your skin is itchy, burning, and you have skin conditions like eczema, psoriasis, and even Ayurveda says if you're attracting lice to you, you know, then you're not detoxifying through the skin or let's say this uh, skin detoxification uh, uh, eliminating organ, the skin, is itself toxic. And so you're getting this smelly smell. So if you have smelly stool, smelly urine, smelly body odor, you're in the right place. This is the right place to be. So those would be the signs of, uh, of, of toxicity. And that's based on, of course, the three malas, uh, the eliminating channels in Ayurveda, uh, feces, urine, and sweat. So now let's take a look at um, different systems which could be uh, blocked um, in Ayurveda. And let's start, and this is a good time for you to write down uh, all of the systems, write down all the systems as I go through them, 
and then you can determine uh, which ones you are um, uh, blocked in. Okay, so the first one you really want to um, uh, look at is your uh, breathing system, your respiratory system. Um, is it blocked or congested? We don't think of this as a system that needs to be decongested, but it does. If you have cough, asthma, difficulty breathing, so that's your breathing system, upper respiratory conge uh, congestion, phlegm, mucus, you're spitting out phlegm in the morning, and you're having trouble breathing through both nostrils. They're not you're not able to breathe through one. It's always clogged. You have to take hot showers. Well, then you have blockage in your respiratory system. In Ayurveda, of course, we call it prana vayu sutra, which is, is more like the prana system, the breathing life force system. So very important system to get your prana and your life force. So don't want this one clogged up. So if that's one for you, then check off the box. And uh, the next one would be uh, the water metabolism system. Uh, Udakavayu Sotra, and this would be uh, your, uh, it has to do with your pancreas and the absorption of water. The signs of deficiency are you become pale, your lips become cracked. This is a, a clear sign. Um, and also a diabetes, a dry tongue, dry mouth, no saliva. These are still related to this system, um, and it can be uh, a congested. And even though you're drinking water, drinking a lot of water, it's not functioning proper, this system, and you end up urinating it out, and it's going out through the uh, kidneys and the bladder and not going into your tissue. So you're drinking a lot of water, but still you, you feel the skin and it doesn't have elasticity. You have wrinkles. Your mouth is getting dry. Your tongue is getting dry. So this is this uh, type of water metabolism system. Um, which isn't quite clearly defined in Western anatomy, but it's very clear in Ayurveda, and it can uh, dry out too uh, and get blocked. So uh, we'll give you ways to open that up. So check that one off if you think that you have blockage in your water metabolism system. So the next system is your uh, Anavayu Sotra, which is your really your digestive system. Um, and the main way you know it's blocked, or we could say too much, a uh, phlegm or mucus in the stomach lining mostly uh, is low appetite, not hungry until much later in the day, maybe can go all day without eating. That's one of the clear signs. Of course, you can also have tumors and blockages and other things that can create uh, this. Sometimes signs are feeling like a vomiting, indigestion, nausea, because, you know, things aren't going down. But the main one is lack of hunger. You're just not hungry. Even you're eating, you're not that hungry. So there's blockages in this anavaya um, uh, sotra. It's a little bit different than just what we would call our digestive system. It's just that upper part. Um, and that, if you feel that's your issue, it'll check off the box that you need to cleanse out that system in your body and then we're going to go through each of these systems how to cleanse them out so that's why you've got to first identify which ones you need to cleanse so uh next is your uh rakta vayu sutra and this means like your blood system so this includes your liver your blood and your spleen and ayurveda uh, anatomy isn't seen so uh uh just basically on the individual organ but more on the whole system so spleen blood liver are all one system in ayurveda and generally, the signs that you that you have blockage or congestion in the liver is, you know, fatty liver, high cholesterol, difficulty digesting fat and oily foods, uh, skin rashes, uh, skin issues, um, and even enlargement of the liver, enlargement of the spleen, swelling. Uh, and so these are signs. So often people uh, have an aversion to oily food. Fried food really bothers them. This is an issue. Now, of course, just like all these other systems, other things can take place besides just being clogged up. For example, the liver could become inflamed, and we say heat in the liver, um, and it also could become depleted like cirrhosis or the dying liver. But no, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about uh, congestion and blockage. So this is going to have a lot to do when it comes to the Arachtavaya Sotra, the liver blood system, fat, cholesterol, uh, obesity, 
uh, and, and these type of conditions uh, where there's a lot of blood fat pumping through the body and the liver is unable to take it out and there are there swelling so it's blocked and that's what we're going to talk about how to flush it out and get that moving again in that system so the next one we'll talk about is the three i mentioned earlier uh mutravaya sutra which is the urinary system and uh, the signs there that you need to cleanse it out is your you know you have pain like uh, stones in the uh, 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 urinary coming out through the urinary tract kidney stones this is obviously a blockage and it really hurts when they're coming out or you just may have really lack of urine um, so or you may have trouble urinating even though you're drinking water you're sweating but you're not urinating so um, sometimes it's the opposite people are urinating a lot and not sweating because they're kind of two different systems to uh, eliminate the excess water through the system so sometimes when people have blockages in the urinary system they're sweating more and that's how the water is getting out of their, their systems so if you're not urinating sweating a lot and have blockage there and or if you felt you've passed kidney stones or you've you've determined through analysis that uh, uh you you have stones then this would be a system that you want to unblock as soon as possible um, and then of course um, um the colon you know this is a very uh uh prushava uh sotra and this is the most common system to get blocked constipation but it also could be diverticuli there could be tumor there could be growth but in this case we're just going to assume it's uh general congestion and blockage of, of fecal matter and uh constipation so it's very important to understand what is constipation and of course i have many youtube videos on cleaning the colon cleaning the liver cleaning the kidneys but when it comes to the uh, colon um, we should be going a couple times a day. So if you're eating three good meals a day and you're going one time a day, one bowel movement a day, then that's minor constipation because the other two got blocked up and it had a little uh, uh, jam and then came out maybe with some effort. So even if you have straining, if you have pain, if you have a lot of gas, if you've got a lot of bloating, these are all, and maybe you're still going one time a day, that's still a blockage. Now, if you're not going till every other day that's uh even worse and if you're only able to go when you take laxatives well that's the same you're just blocked and you're now you're using the laxative hopefully you're using some type of uh, product or herb that's doing more than just relaxing the muscles like magnesium does and actually cleanses the colon because just taking magnesium isn't really going to cleanse the colon it's going to keep things moving by relaxing the muscles but well, what we want to do here is you know cleanse out the colon so you don't you're not constipated uh, uh, again and i'll talk about that and then third is the sweat of sutra and this is your uh sweat system and i i mentioned earlier if you're not sweating at all and you are um, uh, having burning sensation on your body these would all be signs that uh you you need to clean out this system so everybody write down uh which system they need to cleanse okay a lot of systems here don't just think we're talking simple colon cleansing here we're talking we're looking at the whole body the definition of health is not the lack of disease this is i think a very important subject uh do a youtube video just on it but as a side note here um health is not uh, not having a disease or not having to take medication health is having all of these systems working in harmony not being blocked not being depleted not be inflamed and like i said in ayurveda there are 16 major systems we're talking about eight now and there's really thousands of systems in the body that are are functioning and they all can have a, a blockage or inflammation or depletion and when all your systems are working properly then and you have good uh, metabolism you have good vigor you have good sleep you have regular bowel movements you have good appetite uh you have good immunity to infection then that's health uh, not um you know if you if you not 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 just having medication i think that's the point to be taken so we really want to um uh, fix and clean out these systems um and if you're having a system that's not blocked but is uh say for example uh 
uh, depleted, then there's other treatments, more nourishing treatments to these systems to help them. And if there's inflammation in your blood or inflammation in your muscles or inflammation, you know, in your colon or your urinary tract, then this is a, another subject and another approach that needs to be taken to deal with that inflammation and pain. Um, and we're not focused on that. We're focused on blockages and congestions in these uh, eight system, which we're covering today. And this is the Ayurvedic perspective. This is the way Ayurveda looks at the body and diagnoses the body. When an Ayurvedic doctor is reading your pulse and uh, uh, assessing you, he's uh, looking at all these 16 systems and looking for imbalances, depletion, blockage, or inflammation in all 16. And then it's from this, the treatments are prepared. But what we're gonna do today is we're going to talk about uh, how to uh, cleanse these systems out as much as you can by yourself at home. So are we ready? Shoot me back some love there, folks. Let me know you're there. Oh, there you Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about the uh, first system, the air or breathing system or an Ayurveda we call pranavayu system. If you have blockage there, congestion, difficulty breathing, well, first thing you want to do is take away things that are blocking and congestive. And actually, uh, this would apply across the board to most of the systems and that would be remove the most dairy, cheese, uh, not necessarily ghee. Ghee is a clarified butter where they've taken the animal protein off the top and it's not as not congestive by nature. So usually ghee and clarified butter is, can remain even for a person with congestion and blockage, even in the respiratory system, but definitely not yogurt, yogurt at night, cheese, cold milk, all these are gonna create more congestion and more blockage. And to get this, uh, 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 a blockage in the respiratory system, uh, pranavayu sotra, as it's called an Ayurveda, the breathing system uh, and energy system to get the air and into the and the oxygen into the system to get the prana and the life force. Then um, uh, steam, steam rooms. That's why we go in the shower. We take a hot shower and this clears it. You can get some olive oil, mix it with a little eucalyptus oil, rub it on the chest, rub it in the uh, 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 glands here the nasal passages here and around here, and this will clear it up. You can either just breathe eucalyptus oil and it will start to break down this congestion. I have a little tea here called lung tea, and it's uh, just some herbs which you can use. El Champagne probably is the most uh, important one um, and for breaking up congestion in mucus in the uh, respiratory system. And this is just as respiratory system, coughs, asthma, bronchitis. It works quite uh, well. You know, colt's foot and mullein and licorice and ginger are also in there. But the main ingredient is this L champagne. Very good for coughs and it's a decongestant and an expectorant and breaking up this mucus and phlegm. But another home remedy is to take uh, uh, honey and mix it with some black pepper and take that, you know, keep adding more black pepper to your eyes, start watering, your nose start running, and this will break up that congestion. So whenever you're trying to reach this area, it should take the herbs mostly in a syrup uh, form. So you can uh, mix uh, uh, black pepper in uh, honey uh, and even put a little couple drops of eucalyptus oil in it, add a little water, make like a little syrup and let that go down here and start to uh, break up this mucus and congestion. And of course, a good hot bath a good hot shower does wonders. And then leaving out all these congestive foods. So that's the main way to clear up this uh, pranavayu sotra respiratory system from congestion and blockage. So we move on uh, to the um, udakavayu sotra, which is kind of the water metabolism uh, system. And this is when people aren't absorbing water into their tissue. They tend to be urinating it out. So it it's due to a blockage and coldness. So we want to counter that with hot. Again, like the hot steam going in our respiratory system. Now we want to take in hot water. So sip hot water throughout the day. And you can put a ginger in it. Tulsi is very good too, but ginger, a little black pepper. Uh, this will start to break up this uh, 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 congestion um, and open up the um, and oh, a little salt. The salt helps you absorb it. Salt is very cleansing as well to the colon, S helps the body to absorb. So you can put a little pepper, a little salt, but hot water, sipping hot water all throughout the day will start to clear this water metabolism system. 
um, and help you to uh, absorb water better. And you should keep going to the lips are no longer dry and uh, cracking. Uh, this is uh, one of the clear signs. And you can even put a little salt in your water for a couple of weeks to help you hydrate and reabsorb uh, the water better. And again, hot steam, hot baths, salt baths, all will help to break up this congestion uh, uh, body wide. Um, and then uh, next, uh, and I, I, I think I did mention the beginning was the Rasavayu Sutra, and that is the lymphatic system. This is the next system that kind of gets clogged up. And uh, here the signs are swelling, swelling under the arm, edema, swelling in between the groin, uh, swelling under in this area, uh, even the face swelling, puffiness in the eyes. So uh, this is where the lymphatic system gets blocked. One of the best ways to, to, to clear that up, again, is a hot bath or a, a bath with a, a ginger. You can get some ginger powder like this and that's about you know a quarter cup you get about a quarter cup of this and make a hot bath of ginger powder oh my god you're sweating gets the lymph going another great way is dry brushing uh, i didn't get my dry brush over here today but you know dry brushing underneath slowly towards the heart you know both sides and then uh, it, it, you have to you follow a chart on how to dry brush the whole body and then go get in the hot bath uh, but if you're a kapha type person, a salt, uh, uh, not a salt bath, a ginger bath, a ginger bath, that will really get the lymphatic system going. And also a good massage first with hot oils. You can get mustard oil. Mustard oil is really warm, hot oil. Get somebody to give you a hot oil mustard massage. That will get your lymph going. Um, and then go uh, take a hot steam bath and clean that off. And you can also steam yourself in the bath again with this eucalyptus oil. So all this is breaking up congestion and getting things going. And of course, the diet should be very supportive of this type of uh, cleanse. You know, that's why cutting back on dairy during this time will, will help. And if you're a, a kapha type person, you can have more garlic and ginger and onions. And these things will help to loosen up the phlegm, loosen up the congestion. If you're a vata type person, you should have a, you know, more like a kitchari, a rice and split mung bean. If you're a kapha, you could be fasting on just ginger tea. A really good one is a ginger, lemon, and black pepper. That really uh, is a very, uh, in Ayurveda, they call it channel opening drink, where you're taking a lemon plus the black pepper and hot water and drinking this down all day long. This is really good for a kapha. And this opens up all of the systems and as we mentioned earlier the pepper helps with the respiratory the lemon helps take care of the mucus in the stomach lining this is in the hot liquefies this uh, ama and ama is cold and thick and heavy so this uh, hot water with this lemon and pepper really is very very effective so kapha could do that if you're a pitta then you could do something like a grape fast just have grapes all day long in the summertime would be a good way two three days of grape fasting on sweet grapes and that would clean you out cleanse you out if you're a pitta type person with a strong you know juicing is in that same category you could juice for two or three days i wouldn't do it longer than that it's, the, it's just to but the problem with juicing is it tends to be cold the juice is cold and this creates more ama so you'd almost be better off to do soups you know hot soups onion soups uh hot teas things like this um, and for the uh, vata, who's thin, underweight, often they have to be very careful. They can't just do water fasting or juice fasting. They need to do like a kitchari, split mung beans, white basmati rice with some ghee and eat this three times a day. And then take the herbs for detoxification or then do these home remedies that we're talking about here. So um, so that's the Rasavayu Sotra. That was the lymphatic system, how to get that going. And it's since it's all over the body, the best way, like I said, is these type of massage and steam. Repeated. And this is called Purva Karma in Ayurveda, uh, where they're doing a hot oil massage, then a steam treatment, and then hot oil massage and a steam treatment, you know, alternating for up to a week or 10 days to, to get the lymphatic system going and loosen up uh, this uh, congestive ama in the system uh, but skin brushing works uh, ginger uh, baths uh, work very good as well so next let's look at the uh, rock the value social which is the liver 
system. So if you if you're, have fatty liver or high cholesterol or sw swollen liver or an aversion even to eating oily foods or fried foods, your skin is very oily, well, this is signs that uh, you have a blockage and uh, congestion in your liver. So um, many things we can do. That lemon works uh, pretty good there. You wouldn't want to use cayenne or strong spices. Just giving your liver a break with that juicing helps. Uh, so, you know, grape juicing, uh, uh, grape juicing on grapes or, or uh, vegetable juicing using beets and carrots with some ginger would be very good and some lemon in that. You could take a few of those beet, lemon, carrot juice. Taking chlorophyll during the day. Chlorophyll is very inexpensive. You can just put a half an eyedropper in your water. This really supports liver function. But really the bitter herbs work the best. Uh, a liver tea works very well. And of course, we've got dandelion root, uh, a burdock root, uh, milk, thistle, ginger, and uh, coriander, and licorice. Is that right? Yep, that's right. And this works very well. C a couple bags of this type of liver tea will go a long way to improving uh, liver function. And also this one here, blood detox tea, which is similar. It just has uh, sarsaparilla in it, uh, which helps chaparral and uh, organ grape root but still has the dandelion and burdock root like the liver tea, but it's more focused on the skin, very good for skin conditions. So both of those uh, teas, liver tea, blood detox tea, they're gonna go a long way towards cleansing uh, the blood and liver and improving um, the function of this uh, whole system. So uh, next, let's talk about uh, the uh, Mutravaya Sultra, the urinary system. Remember, this is if it's blocked, you have kidney stones. So there's some types of flushes you can do there. You know, parsley flush. Um, if you have stones and you want to have say, some of these herbs and take uh, with a, or, or even do a fast and barley water. You soak barley overnight, just drink the water in mass amounts all day. And the barley lubricates the lining of the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, bladder and, uh, and then and allows you to flush out these stones and of course there's many herbs that do that um, particularly the most famous um, that we have is you know this gravel root looks like gravel by the way it's hard you really got to boil the heck out of it and there's of course herba ursi which fights infection nettle which is very good so you could just do nettle you can do parsley but if you throw in these herbs like herba ursi and uh, horsetail and uh, uh, white oak bark juniper berries and of course gravel root then you can start breaking up these kidney stones and really flush it out so i generally have people do a type of tea like this for you know just seven seven days drinking extra water drinking the tea all day and if you're a kapha type person who's overweight you may be able to just fast on that tea and this helps getting rid of this nighttime urination which is a big problem and that's somewhat you know inability to hold urine uh in the bladder it can often be signs of mild a bladder infection and that tea has the some of the herbs in the herba ursi that fight the urinary tract infection as well so what happens when you take that tea and you flushing all day long with a lot of water urinating 10 times a day then you stop in the evening then at night you don't urinate so and that's very important because this nighttime urination having to wake up one time not alone two three times at night is very uh, disruptive to your sleep and uh, and then when your sleep is disturbed, uh, then your whole body is affected adversely. Your immune system becomes weaker. Your liver doesn't have time to do all of its metabolic uh, uh, activities that it needs to do. So you become weak, you become fatigued, you're easily to become sick, and all because you're waking up at night to urinate because you're disturbing your sleep. So if you have this, uh, waking up at night i'm not saying it's just kidney stones or blockage it could be infection it could be inflammation but really should take care of that I always prioritize that in dealing with new clients because the, the benefits are good uh, they get a good night's sleep and this helps them immensely in other ways so if you have problems in this mutra via sutra this urinary system whether it's blockage or infected or infection you should try to take care of that as uh, soon as you can so uh, the next is your colon, and this is probably what most people thought we were going to talk about most of this uh, webinar, is how to uh, cleanse out the colon uh, from constipation. 
And this is really the most uh, a common form of blockage. And of course, we know if we're not uh, eliminating every day, then these toxins are reabsorbing back into the system, a kind of autotoxicity going back into the blood, going back into the liver and, and creating a burden, we could say, for the liver and even the, the kidneys. So, you know, most people think their bowel movements are normal, but that's because they, maybe they haven't compared with other people. But, you know, uh, people have a, a wide range of, of, of bowel movements. And if you're missing a day or you, you've been most of your life been missing a day, you may say, oh, now I'm going. But, you know, for 25 years, you, you didn't go every day. Then you have this type of congestion. Again, you should be able to see that real clear on the tongue when you have a heavy coating on your tongue in the morning, uh, lack of appetite. And it, I'm not sure if I said, but, you know, all of this type of blockage and congestion leads to fatigue at the end of the day. It's slowly slowing you down. And this is definitely the case when the colon is uh, blocked because uh, your appetite's down, you don't have a good appetite, you're not getting in as much food uh, because of the blockage. And if you're not you know, processing enough food, you're not getting enough nutrients, you're not getting enough nutrients, you know, this is an issue. And if you've got a lot of uh, a poor digestion with mucus and phlegm or in, in the GI tract, then you're not absorbing through the intestinal villi well, not getting the nutrients. Even having too much loose stool or diarrhea creates type of toxins and depletion and even can deplete you even faster than constipation. So it's very important to fine tune your, your bowel movements. You get in a nice two or three bowel movements a day. No problem, nice, well-formed. And I have many uh, YouTube videos on improving your bowel movements and uh, clearing out constipation. Um, now, uh, there's many home remedies. Let me give you a few home remedies, then I'll talk about some herbs. Herbs are easier, you know, personally, just give you the herb and you'll go tonight, keep taking the herb and the herbal formula and it will clean you out. But home remedies are first, um, you know, having more fruit between the meal, having large amounts of juicy fruit, getting rid of dried things, dried fruit, dried crackers. These are all generally leading towards constipation, getting rid of cold things, cold drinks, cold water. These are can be constipating dry crackers, you know, have bread with butter on it, bread with olive oil on it. This makes a big difference. These dry breads can be very constipating and a dairy can be constipating, particularly cheese and, and on all meat. Uh, whether it's chicken, fish, beef, pork, they all have no fiber and they're all very constipating. So you want to increase the fiber by having legumes and beans uh, more and cutting back on this animal protein and uh, having more sweet, juicy fruit in between the meal. And you can take prunes at night. Even just taking uh, hot water with a couple tablespoons of olive oil at night makes a, a, a mild laxative. So you want to try all these things. Um, but, you know, if you've had years of constipation and it's chronic, uh, it may take a little bit more than that. There's many great herbs there. Carsata Sagrada being one of my favorite there. Uh, strong, but not too strong. Um, and uh, Senna, Senna leaf, which is very strong and can give cramping to some people. So you'd never want to take these straight, uh, particularly Senna. You always want to mix it with some uh, ginger, cumin, coriander, fennel, some carminative herbs to take that cramping effect. And it's probably too strong for uh, uh, vata. And for pittas, you know, um, aloe vera is a very nice laxative. Even just drinking the aloe vera whole leaf, the inner leaf doesn't have that strong laxative effect. The whole aloe vera, uh, which I have growing out here in the garden, if you just take it and throw it in the blender and drink it down, you're going the next morning. Uh, and it's the leaf that does it. The leaf has that strong laxative effect. So here we got some whole aloe vera, including the leaf, dried, very nice. It's not too bad of a flavor like some of these uh, herbs like haritaki, uh, an Indian herb, which has a very terrible taste. Some people say the herbs taste like, well, I won't say. But aloe vera, very nice, very cooling, uh, and very good for pitta, and uh, effective, but not too strong, and no cramping. Very good choice. And if you're having thin little pencil stools, and you know, can add some fiber, like ground flax is very good for vata, or um, a psyllium husk is very good. Uh, but you can't add it too much and you can't add it too fast or you'll constipate yourself. And you can always add a little charcoal to it. Right? Even just charcoal water is very detoxifying, helping to suck out uh, heavy metals and clean the colon. You'd want to do that later after you got the bowels going. First, use a laxative. Just get the bowels moving. Get things moving well. Um, 
with the uh, change in the diet, taking the laxative herbs, purging the intestinal tract. Another, of course, great home remedy is castor oil. And I have a whole YouTube video just on castor oil. And, uh, uh, but a couple of tablespoons of castor oil in a, a cup of hot ginger tea at night and uh, don't have plans in the morning because you'll be clear. And that you won't want to do that every day. You can do small amounts of castor oil, like a teaspoon a night. It's good for joint pain and chronic, dry, hard constipation um, because it's an oil. Uh, but generally, we just use it for one uh, time one or to get break up this uh, uh, blockage and then take the other laxative herbs, get things moving, then add in the fibers, um, then add in other cleansing agents like the charcoal to, to cleanse the, the colon and then some light cleansing agents to help support the uh, villi in the, in the GI tract like a trifla or amlaki. So that's the process for cleaning out the colon, probably really the most important organ to uh, detoxify and definitely the first one you want to start with because if you're constipated uh, and not having a couple of bowel movements a day, it's going to be very difficult to cleanse the liver that requires its toxins to come out in the form of bile, which then goes into the upper small intestinal tract and would come out through the colon. But if you're constipated, it's not going to come out. So you'd always want to get the bowels moving first before you move on to the liver. Um, and you'd want to really get the lymphatic system moving uh, first as well. There's a tends to be a priority, uh, an order to this uh, uh, cleansing, and sometimes these decisions have to be made. The last category we're going to talk about is this uh, Sveta Vayu Sotra, or the sweat system. This is if you're not sweating, it's blocked. Your skin's dry, and you, you're probably urinating more because if you're not sweating, you're, you're, you're having this blockage in your the sweat system, as it's called in Ayurveda. So you want to open that up and get it going. And of course, a steam room is the best to, to open that up, steam baths. And again, taking that ginger uh, bath, that will open it right up and you'll be sweating and uh, a lot. And this will op open up. If your skin's really itchy, itchy, itchy all the time, itchy, and this is this type of blockage in this uh, sweat uh, system. So those are the uh, systems that you want to kind of look at. Um, and then you want to choose which ones you have blockage, uh, hopefully not all of them, uh, and, and then prioritize what order you want to uh, cleanse these systems out uh, one at a time. And, you know, I think if it's not too serious, the home remedies that I mentioned would uh, help. And, of course, in Ayurveda, a panchakarma, which is the five cleansing actions, were very effective. And that is, includes vamana, which is clearing out the upper respiratory congestion and this is like controlled throwing up very very effective you know you drink some licorice tea to soothe the 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 esophagus and the respiratory system and then you drink a bunch of salt water and some other herb that may make you vomit and then you vomit in a bucket and you can see all the mucus and phlegm in there and your asthma and bronchitis and uh, breathing problems can be gone for the whole year from that just one treatment very very effective and there's also verchana where is it like a purge where you take castor oil or other herbs um, and you just flush the whole GI tract um, and cleanse it out. And that's what we're doing a lot with these herbs. And then there's basti, where you take the uh, 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 oil or herbs and put them in an enema and put it in the rectum and clean your uh, colon in this manner. Really the most effective way to clean the colon. And actually, if you have long-term constipation, the really only cure can come through this basti, where you're getting herbs plus oil, put it in the rectum, and you're lubricating the uh, the rectum and allowing it to absorb more liquid by putting some salt in there, cleaning it out, then putting oil in there. And this generally will help to uh, alleviate constipation for sometimes months without having to take the herbs and take the laxatives over and over and over and over. And again, I have uh, videos on that. And, you know, you should get some help in doing that properly because it's what herbs you put in the enema bag that are really quite uh, important. So... Um, and then, of course, uh, there's, you know, other forms of cleansing the liver and uh, that you could do as well, as uh, which I cover in some of my other uh, webinars um, and flushing out gallstones. So we didn't even get into the uh, gallbladder blockage, uh, but that would be a whole subject in its own. So these would also uh, would be uh, cleansed out of your body. So I hope that gave you gave you a good idea 
of the different areas in which can be blocked. And remember, as I said uh, in the beginning here, that health is all of these systems working without blockage, without inflammation, without depletion. Um, if you have your digestive system blocked and you have this no appetite, you know, or in your constipated, you can take all the vitamins you want. It's not going to make any difference. It's not going to help you. You're not absorbing them. Um, so, you know, if your lymphatic system is blocked, you know, and you're clogged and constipated as well, then all the dieting you do in the world isn't going to help you because the problem is the blockage. If your liver is fatty and clogged, uh, you know, just eliminating all oil and fat isn't going to help you. It's actually going to deplete you and make you give you nutritional deficiencies and further dry you out. So eliminating the, the oil or fried foods that bother the, this type of liver condition doesn't really solve it. You need to, you need to uh, support the liver, cleanse the liver with these bitter herbs and these uh, uh, flushes uh, and fasts and that, that will help to, to get the liver working better again. So you can have little uh, fried food every once in a while and not feel nauseated and uh, feel like throwing up or have heartburn and these things. So, you know, just avoiding foods that clog you are not uh, a form of detoxification. I think that's an important point to understand. People who can't eat dairy, they can't even eat a piece of bread without feeling bad or uh, uh, then, you know, this is a digestive problem. This is weak digestion in most cases. 99% of people who don't have wheat or gluten aren't celiac, they just have poor, weak digestion. The same goes for dairy. I mean, dairy can be very congested, but if you're already clogged up and already congested, then when you eat more dairy, you're going to feel worse. And if you stop it, you're going to feel a little better. But this, this doesn't mean you solve the problem. Just eliminating the clogging foods like gluten and dairy isn't detoxifying, isn't opening up these channels, isn't opening up these systems, isn't restoring your health. You're just going down a slippery slope of continuing to eliminate, eliminate, eliminate more foods. And, you know, a lot of the clients that come to me, I mean, they don't even know what to eat. There's so few things they can eat. And that's because the digestive system's got weaker and weaker and weaker. Their system is getting more clogged, clogged, clogged. So I'm opening up the channels, opening up the system by taking the hot water, the lemon, the honey, the black pepper, the hot baths, the, 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 the liver herbs, the colon herbs. Uh, you know, we have these... Colon formulas, different colon formulas, you know, for vata, pitta, and kapha. And they have uh, many herbs in there that will uh, not just get the bowels moving, but actually break up that fecal matter and cleanse it out. The most common, of course, is a trifla made with amlaki, bibataki, and haritaki. Not only is this a mild laxative, but it's cleansing out the colon. That's why in Ayurveda, it's recommended to take a little trifla all the time to keep your uh, a colon cleansed. And it's also important in the spring to do some type of cleanse. It's important to flush the urinary system every once in a while. It's important to, you know, sweat the system out and cleanse this uh, system as well. You know, just like, you know, we would if this was a, a car, we would know we have to flush out the radiator every once in a while, have to flush out the old oil every once in a while. So we need to do these on a regular basis to our body to open up these channels and uh, uh, decongest it. And as we just give it the term detox, but you know, it's really uh, a little bit more than that. So I hope that helped you. Uh, feel free to uh, contact me personally if you need a little help uh, cleaning your uh, systems or just identifying which systems are blocked and uh, the order in which to uh, uh, decongest them is often a very important point. Um, and of course, Every individual needs a different approach, even to the same type of blockage. Just like I mentioned with the colon, you could have a vata who's blocked, who's dry stools. You could have a kapha who's blocked because of mucus. You could have a pitta who's blocked because of just weak digestive fire. So the treatment and the approach and the herbs would vary greatly between these three people, all claiming to have const constipation. So all treatments should be individualized. That's very, very important. There's no one size fits all. You have to get this out of your head that, you know, what do I take for constipation? Well, there's no answer to that. You know, it depends on who you are. Don't keep thinking that, you know, uh, is this the cure for something? It's kind of an allopathic uh, uh, viewpoint. We have to think in terms of what's going to be suitable for me, what's going to work for me. And this is what we do uh, when we meet 
as we identify your type, your type of blockage and which system and then which herbs, which home remedies are going to clear it up. And then the next appointment, you know, which uh, systems we're, we're going to work on next. And so a lot of this is the, this type of opening the systems, clearing the channels, as it said in Ayurveda, is a big part of the work uh, that is done. Now, of course, cleansing, detoxifying, opening channels is, you know, only one type of treatment. That may not be the first and best treatment to start with. If you're depleted and weak and underweight and frail, then you need to wait on doing those treatments. You need to be doing nurturing and building, improving your digestion, improving your appetite, and focusing on building yourself up before you go into these cleansing and detoxifying treatments. So they can be very depleting and you could become worse. I just wanted to say that. And again, I want to repeat that everything I've shared with you is based on Ayurveda, and I've done my best to portray uh, uh, Ayurveda and explain these treatments in in uh, layman terms without a lot of Sanskrit um, and help you to understand how you can uh, treat or uh, clear and uh, yourself of blockage in these uh, systems. Um, so if you study the subject in Ayurveda, you will find much of the same information that I gave you and uh, much of the same home treatments have been around for thousands and thousands of years. So there's nothing really new here. Um, it's the uh, proactive maintenance of your health. It's very important. Don't think that you're going to go to somebody else to to improve your health, uh, whether it's a doctor or a chiropractor or an acupuncturist or an herbalist uh, like myself. You have to think that you need to take responsibility for your health. So to do that, you need to understand yourself. You need to understand your body. You need to understand your your strengths and weaknesses, and you understand the systems that are not working well. And so you're able to understand when they are working well and be monitoring all these systems in your body. Only you can really take care of your health. You know, we take care of our children when they're young, but even when they get a little older, there's only so much we can do. We can't keep, you know, making sure he's pooping every day when he's 25 years old. I mean, you know, only so much we can do for to help other people, even our own children and even our loved ones. At the end of the day, it boils down to we only ourselves can take care of ourselves. And these type of cleansing, detoxification procedures are one of the best things that uh, we can do to improve our health, improve our system, and ultimately improve our longevity. And thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for being here. I, I sincerely hope that it helped you to understand your own body more and understand the possibilities of what can be done to improve these many systems in your body and restore your health in a natural way. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll stay here for a little bit to see if any of you have any questions.